Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh, the host of A Story to Tell, where I, a program where I interview people about their stories or stories they might have about other people. And today we have such a treat. My guest is Mort Soul, and he's not only going to tell us a little bit about himself, but he's also going to tell us the story of Casey at the Bat. Hi, Mort. Good morning, Leslie. How are you? Well, I'm delighted. Well, you are quite the, your family, the Soul family is like, you know, Hall of Fame in sports well, for Maine, right? Maine Soul Hall of Fame, yeah. I think your family probably has more people in that Hall of Fame than any other family. Well, don't. Don't exclude the Bowdoin College Athletic Hall of Honor either. Oh, yeah. well, we wouldn't want to leave yeah. Bowdoin out of it. I, I, I'm assuming the B, Big B is it's, it's for It's not for Bates, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> no. Although I think your mother went to Bates. My mother went to Bates, You're right. So she, she might think that could, well, could go either way. I bet she is, yeah. She's <laughs> speaking to us now, I'm sure. You come from quite the family. Well, uh, your dad, your uncle, your brothers. Grandfather. Are all goodness. sports people. Yes. And yeah. uh, football in particular, mm -hmm. for most of them. Right. A little yeah. track thrown in. Yes. And yeah. some baseball. Some baseball, yes. And yeah. now you excelled at baseball at, during high school. Uh huh. And well. <laughs> yes, you did. And okay. football. Well, I played. I played. Uh, I was co-captain at both Deering and Bowden. Uh huh. I played both. Yeah. So why both? I mean, what? I mean, one was in the fall and well, one was it, in well, the keep spring. Keep in mind. Keep in mind. In those days, uh, it was especially in high school. The one sport athlete was very, very rare. Nowadays, it it seems to be the the norm. Uh, but no, I played uh, base, uh, football in the fall, and then in the uh, the winter, indoor track. And and even though you you may find it hard to believe, we still have a uh, a racket at the Portland Expo. And uh, <laughs> I led off, handed the baton to a fellow named Bill O'Flynn, to Paul Gray, to future U.S. Congressman Tom Allen, and that record was set. And uh, it would have been 1962. And then oh, a couple of years ago, they moved the meet from there to Gorham. And so the, the record will be there ad infinitum. All right, I'm <laughs> proud deal. of you. <laughs> well, big deal. So you you hurt your shoulder, I think. The summer before I went to college, yeah. Yeah, and that was, the that baseball was... kind of was like not Well, I played happen. my senior year and threw, they put me at first base. And so mm -hmm. I was able to come in side arms. Side on and and I, I did okay that year. Yeah, all yeah. state. Wow! And then at Bowdoin, you played football. Yes. A and yeah. baseball or not? Yes, yeah. I played baseball my, my senior year. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. you, ended up, doing two years on the football team. Oh, I played for I played oh, my, I played for the freshman football yeah. team and four years. Yeah. With uh, excuse me, in three years, sophomore year through my senior year. Football. And and we want to let our audience know that that was when. Bowden really had a football team. <laughs> Please, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that, but they were really good. Well, the, 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 the without question, I think the the greatest victory was against the University of Maine, mm -hmm. and that would have been in the uh, fall. Oh goodness, am I going to get this right? 1961. No, yeah. 1963. 1963. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 1963, <From> the... <laughs> when the Bangor uh, Daily News said. Bowden should not only not be allowed in the town of Orono and not even on the, the field with the University of Maine. Well, sophomore Paul Soule, my older brother, put on quite a show that day and Bowden beat Maine 7 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and the terrific. first one in the Bowden locker room to congratulate them was the University of Maine uh, All New England guard. Phil Soul, oh. my oldest brother. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, so it was nice. You had yeah. people on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. you did not leave baseball behind when you left college. Well, you... I played in the Twilight League, and, yeah. I, and I, I played in the, the over 40 league uh, in Brunswick. Yeah. yeah I, but yeah. you also coached. Yes, I did. For and many Deering. years. Yeah, for many and, years. Yeah. yeah. 
And now you go to games all the time. Well, my son is the head coach at Greeley, and, oh. and he's one of oh. four state championships. Wow. Yeah, so I go and, and yell at the head coach, and <laughs> whatever I suggest, he does the opposite, and he wins. <laughs> and you also go and sit on the bench at Bowdoin whenever they play with, with some of your well, teammates from from the well, days that, when yeah. you were at Bowdoin. Well, sitting back of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not on the bench. Unless you have an uh, alumni game. That was fun. Yeah, oh, showing up I'll have that. to go yeah. to that. Yeah. Now, um, you're famous for something else. And I heard this recently. Up at Bowdoin, sitting on the bleachers with you, this you do a wonderful rendition of Casey at the Bat. Thank you. And I'm going to step aside and let you do that for our audience. Okay, it was kind of, it's, it was difficult to memorize it. Not everybody walks around and says, then upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat. Uh, <laughs> it took me several hours to learn that line. Yeah. <laughs> but you've done that all over. You did it at Fenway Park before a game. Yeah, Cooperstown, New York, at the oh. National Baseball Hall of Fame, right over here at Hadlock Field. But usually it's a it's a little league banquet and they give me a red hot dog and, and, <laughs> and send me home. That's my stipend. Well, we're not going to give you anything, but we want to hear you hear you say this. So I'm going to step aside and in a you're minute the boss. you're going to do your thing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and welcome to Mudville, a small town. Let's say 150 miles northwest of New York City. The day I remember it well, August 13th, 1888. The citizens of Mudville were very proud of their baseball team, but on this afternoon, the outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with one inning left to play. And when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope that springs eternal from the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little hope of Casey coming to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and fans saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from 5,000 throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled on the dell, it knocked against the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And while greeting the crowd, he lightly tipped his hat no stranger in the crowd could doubt. That's Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. And while the withering pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed from Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. Now the leather-covered spheroid came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. It ain't my style, said Casey. Steroid! 
won, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar like the beating of a storm wave on some stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone from the stand. It's likely they'd have killed him. Had not Casey raised his hand with a smile of Christian charity. Great Casey's visit shown he stilled the rising tumult. He bid the game go on. He singled to the pitcher and once more the spheroid flew. Casey still ignored it and the umpire said steroid two. Frog! Cry the Madden thousands and Echo answered, fraud. But one scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain and they knew. He would not let that ball go by again. The smile is gone from Casey's lips. He grinds his teeth in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere. Somewhere hearts are light. Somewhere people laugh and somewhere children shout, but there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Okay, well, this was such a treat to have Mort tell the story of Casey at the bat. <laughs> now he's put me at the bat, and we're going to see what happens. But we're going to see please. what a real strikeout looks like. Ah, uh, just kidding. Oh. She's going to hit the home run. I, I'm the strikeout oh, here. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, Casey, I'm, not, I'm better than, you, than I look. Anyway, if you have a story to tell, I would love to talk with you, and you can contact me at Leslie, L-E-S-L-E-Y, Mac, at portlandmedia.org. Strike one, no, home run. <laughs> <laughs>